Back in 2021, I was fortunate enough to receive a printer from Elgu. And I thought, what better way to try it out than by printing something that I can build? So to that end, what you can see on the screen here is a 3D printed Curtis Hawk. This is, in effect, my first ever 3D printed model kit. I'm Matt, this is Model Minutes, and join me on the workbench today as I show you how I built my 172nd scale Curtis Hawk, which is completely 3D printed. So to start off with, I needed a 3D design and fortunately on Thingiverse, there was a design by Eric with a H and it's actually really good and I'll add a link down below if you'd like to take a look at it for yourself. So a massive thank you to this guy for uploading this because it made my modeling experience so much easier. Anyway, I downloaded the files and put them into my slicing software. I'm using Chitubox here. What this is going to do is help me get them print ready and make sure the printer knows what to do. So when that was done, I saved it to the memory stick and loaded it into the printer. And then it got to work creating these various parts. Looking back, uh, seeing as I have a bit more experience now, these are not the best printed in the world because they've got lots of sort of split layers. And that comes down to my inexperience because I should have really orientated them a bit better. But at the time, I just cracked on anyway and started cutting them from the support material. This is, of course, after I've already washed and cured them with some UV light. When they were all free from the support material, they could be cleaned up quite a bit using a sanding stick just to remove the rough edges. In a few places as well, I'd get my knife out and cut away any bits that were remaining. Resin is quite easy to work with, but you must take the right precautions to keep your lungs safe from breathing in those fine particles of dust. The best glue to use to stick resin components together is super glue. So I applied a little bit of this to the fuselage and spread it out with a cocktail stick. I could then join the two fuselage halves together. There's no sort of locating marks or anything. You just have to get it sort of best effort aligned. When that was done, I added a bit of glue to the front and then added on the nose component. I think the reason why this has been designed like this is so that you've got a gap for where the engine exhausts are going to go because otherwise it would be quite hard to print that. Speaking of the engine exhausts, they were next to go into their slots and these are quite fragile and fiddly. So I had to take quite a bit of care not to break these by accident. The two propeller blades were carefully glued into their little holes inside of the spinner. Again, taking care not to snap these very fragile and thin resin components. And then when that was done, the front part of the rudder was glued into the tail surfaces. Humbrol model filler was then used to fill in the gaps on the fuselage and then when that was dry I sanded it smooth with a sanding stick. Now it's time to do a bit of painting. I'm going to use this Vallejo medium yellow model air paint through my airbrush as the base color for yellow. I did do a bit of research and looked at some of the aircraft online and they sort of had yellow or sort of interwar paint schemes. Uh, but I wasn't originally happy with the yellow, so I tried the XF3 from Tamiya, which I thinned down with some acrylic thinner. This seemed to give a much more vibrant color that I was looking for. After that, I went for this US Air Force Green to do the rest of the components, including the fuselage and the struts. Vallejo White was then thinned down with some Tamiya Acrylic Thinner X28 to help it flow better. This was then painted onto the rudder. A couple of thin layers would be needed to get a nice even finish and this will form a base for the next colours. I'm going to use blue and I masked this rudder up just to leave a thin band for the blue. Then I masked it again and used this red to create the stripes that the interwar United States aircraft tended to have until I had a rudder that looked like this. I'm pretty happy with the way this has turned out. I then glued the tail parts onto the fuselage and then glued the painted rudder onto this. The lower wings can now be glued into their slot on the bottom of the fuselage and the little struts that go on the side of the fuselage towards the nose were then added into their little mounting points as well. 
Again, a little bit fiddly, but just needed to take my time. This could then be followed by the struts on the wings of the model. Again, just making sure that I didn't break them accidentally. The wings could then be glued on top. There is actually a jig which you can print out to get these perfect, but I pretty much just did it by trial and error. After this, the landing gear legs are supposed to be bent into shape, but because I've made this out of resin rather than bending, it just snapped. That's not really a problem, I'll just glue it back together. So I started off by gluing the bottom part into its position on the bottom of the model, then glued the legs into place where they should be in their little slots. The designer of this kit's done quite a good job and it does feel like a normal model kit with how everything is sort of laid out. The strut that goes between the landing gear was then added into place here. And earlier when I said that this was completely 3D printed, it was a little bit of a lie. The tail skid I had to make out of some wire because the original one was just too fragile. The next paint I used was Vallejo Black and this was very carefully painted onto the propeller blades. I also used this on the circles that make up the tires for the wheels and when it was dry, the hubs, which are already painted, were added. They were then glued onto their legs. K Colors Airbrush Gloss Varnish was then used all over the model as a base for the decals. I'm hoping that it will give a smoother surface for the transfers to stick to. And speaking of the transfers, I've got some from my spares box. Some numbers, some letters and some roundels. Not sure which kits they're from, possibly some Mr. Craft ones. So just to make sure they don't disintegrate on me, I painted them all with a good layer of the liquid decal film from Microscale. This should help them stop falling apart. The decal fix from Humble was then used to apply them to the aircraft. I put the roundels on the wings, the numbers on the nose and the letters on the tail. When that was done and they were completely cured, some matte varnish was airbrushed all over the model to help dull down that glossy shine from before. And with that, a little bit more painting was needed just to bring out the engine radiator. So I'm using gunmetal gray for that and the exhausts on the side. And there's only one more step which needs doing now, and that's to glue on the propeller. And that is my build complete. So, what do I think of this kit? Well, it's not really a kit in the traditional sense of the kits that I build on my channel. So I'm not sure I can give it a proper review. To be brutally honest, the files which I downloaded from Thingiverse are absolutely top notch and they do give you a very good looking model in the end. However, it doesn't look as good as it does in the files because of the inexperience I had when I was printing this. There are quite a few layer lines and I've got some separation in places and that is purely down to the fact that I didn't know about orientating the parts when you print them. Putting the parts into different orientations when you print them should help avoid leaving those layer lines when they are coming out of the machine. But on the whole, for a first go, it doesn't look that bad. I know I probably could have done a bit more detailing or used a different paint scheme, but I went with the paint scheme that I have here because I saw it online and it sort of matched with the transfers that I had in my stash. I could have added rigging as well and possibly even a pilot or some cockpit details but at the end of the day that's not really where I was going with this kit. The whole point of building this one was to see what it would be like and even if it was possible to build a 3D printed model and I think yes I have managed to achieve that. Perhaps in the future I'll revisit this one and see if I can do a better job of it. As I've mentioned before, a massive thank you to the guy who uploaded the files to Thingiverse so that we can all enjoy his work. And a quick shout out to my patrons and channel members for the extra support they give the channel. Massive thanks to these guys on screen, and I'd like to welcome my newest member, Moz6510Models, over on YouTube. Welcome to the club. If you're new here and you enjoyed this type of video, make sure you click that subscribe button so you never miss a modeling upload. And if you found this video interesting and entertaining, then dropping a like would be massively appreciated. Finally, I think the last thing to say is a massive thank you to you for watching this one, and I will see you on the workbench again next time.